All right. Today, we're going to look at definite integrals. Okay? So, basically, an integral is the integral of something of y dx. So, what is... What is the graph of y equals 4? What does that look like? It's a horizontal line. So y equals 4 is a horizontal line like this. What we're doing is we're figuring out the area of that horizontal line from negative 3 to 5. From negative 3 up to what is the area of this rectangle? Well, what's the length of it? Eight and the height? Four. So this answer should be 32. Now we're going to attack it from a different way. Okay? We're going to take the integral of four, which is... What's the integral of four? 4x, and we're going to go from negative 3 to 5 with that. So we're going to take 4 times the top number minus 4 times the bottom number. Okay? Well, what's 4 times 5? 20 minus 4 times the bottom number. Minus a negative is plus a positive, gives us 32. Okay? That finds the area under a curve if you use a definite integral. Now, a rectangle is real easy. Here's another rectangle. But we're going from 5 down to 3. So if we integrate this, what's the integral of 2? What's the integral of 2? 2x, and we're going from 5 to 3, which means we can take 2 times 3 minus 2 times 5. What's 2 times 3? 6. 2 times 5? 6 minus 10 is a? So when you go in this direction, it should be a negative number. Okay, when you go from a higher number down to a lower number. Okay. This would be probably a trapezoid of some kind. If we look at 6x plus 1. We can't go all the way out to 12. I mean, it would go way up there. But it's going to have an x-intercept of 1. And it's going to go up with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I mean, it's going to go way up, so it's going to be some sort of a trapezoid from 3 to 6, and it's going to be something like that, okay? So, instead of trying to draw this trapezoid out and figure out the area of it, all we have to do is take the integral of it. What's the integral of 6x? Three x squared. What's the integral of one? X from three to twelve. Notice how we don't put in the plus c because these are definite integrals. If they have numbers there, they're definite integrals. If there's not numbers, they're indefinite, and then we use a plus c. So we take three times twelve squared plus three or plus twelve. Sorry, plus twelve. I gotta plug it in for x. Minus three times three squared plus three. Well, twelve squared is one forty four. Three times one forty four. Help me out. What's three times one forty four? Wow. Minus 
27 plus 3. So 432 plus 12 is 444 minus 30, which is 414. Okay, definite integrals. Ooh, what if we have 6x to the negative third? What's the integral of 6x to the negative third? It's x to the negative 4 or negative 2? Negative 2. Negative 2 times what is a positive 6? Negative 3. So you're taking the integral of negative 3 x to the negative second from negative 1 to negative 2 or negative 2 to negative 1. <coughs> However you want to say it, negative 2 to negative 1. All right. So it's negative 3 over negative 1 squared minus negative 3 over negative 2 squared. What's negative 1 squared? 1 minus negative 2 squared. So if we go plus a positive, negative 3 plus 3 fourths is negative 2 and 1 fourth, which is the same as negative 9 fourths. All right. We're going to rewrite write this as a definite integral. What do we do first? Yeah, we're going to simplify this fraction down. So what this becomes is the integral from 5 to 9 of 1 over x minus 4 over x squared, which is the integral from 5 to 9 of 1 over x minus 4x to the negative second. What's the integral of 1 over x? ln of x. What's the integral of 4x to the negative second? Well, x becomes to the, if we move it up by 1, negative 1, so that becomes a positive 4. So it's the ln of x plus 4 over x from 5 to 9. So if we put in the 9 and then put in the 5, it's the ln of 9 plus 4 ninths minus the ln of 5 plus 4 fifths. Well, if we get the lns together, it's the ln of 9 minus the ln of 5 plus 4 ninths minus 4 fifths. Well, if we subtract natural logs, they become a fraction, if you remember that from your Algebra 2 days. And then common denominator would be 45. 5 and 5, 9 and 9, 20 minus 60, 20 minus 36 is a negative 16 45ths. So it would be this one. Okay, a little bit more work to those. Let's do this one. What's our first step? What I would do, take the integral from 3 to 4 of 4 plus 24x to the, now integrate. So then we get 4x plus what? So it's minus 24x to the negative first from 3 to 4. Stick in the 4. We get 4 times 4 minus 24 over 4 minus 4 times 3 minus 24 over 3. So it's 16 minus 6 minus 12 minus 8. 
So it's 10 minus 4, which is 6. Cosine. What's the integral of cosine? Sine. So 5 sine of x from negative 5 pi over 2 to negative 2 pi. So it's 5 sine of negative 5 pi over 2 minus 5 sine of negative 2 pi. Where's negative 2 pi? On the unit circle? Zero. zero. What's the sign of zero? So that's just zero. Okay. Where's negative 5 pi over 2? Well, we're at negative 1 pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 4 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2. What's the sign down there? Negative 1. So 5 times negative 1 minus 0 is negative 5. E. What's the integral of E? E. So this is 10 E to the X from 0 to 14. So it's 10 E to the 14th minus 10 E to the 0. What's E to the 0? So it's 10 E to the 14th minus 10. <coughs> Piecewise functions. All right. Piecewise functions. If it's less than or equal to zero, it's this. If it's greater than zero, it's this. So then we write these as two different integrals. It's the integral from negative three to zero of negative two x plus the integral from zero to one of nine square root of x. So you have to split them up into two integrals depending where these are at. So, what's the integral of negative 2x? What's the integral of 9x to the 1 half? It would be x to the 3 halves with what in front? 3 halves times what makes 9? Yep. So if we stick in a zero for this first one, we get zero minus. If we stick in a negative three, we get negative nine. Because negative nine squared, or negative three squared is nine, but it has a negative in front, so it's negative nine. Plus, if we put in a one, we get six. Put in a zero, we get zero. So it's nine plus six, which is 15. So we have the integral where it's less than zero. So from negative one to zero of x plus one, plus from zero to one of the cosine of phi x. So, what's the integral of x plus 1? The integral of x plus 1. 1 half x squared plus x. From negative 1 to 0. And the integral of the cosine of pi x would be the sine of pi x. I think times pi. Ooh. Now let me think. If we take the derivative of this, it's the sine of pi x pi. So it's 1 over pi times that. From 0 to 1. 
Because if we take the sine of pi x, it'd be the cosine of pi x times pi. So we have to get rid of that times pi with a 1 over pi. All right. So 1 half of 0 is 0 plus 0 is 0 minus 1 half of negative 1 squared is 1 half minus or plus a negative 1. Plus 1 over pi. times the sine of pi times 1. What's the sine at pi? 0. Minus, what's the sine of 0? 0. So this whole thing is 0 anyway back there. So it's the negative 1 half plus negative 1 half. So this winds up to be just plain simple 1 half. Okay, last one. Absolute value functions, what do they look like? What letter of the alphabet? A V. What in the heck is 3x plus 3 going to look like? Well, if we put in a negative 3, we get negative 9 plus 3, which is negative 6, which the absolute value of it is 6. So if I graph this, at negative 3, we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At negative 2, we get negative 6 plus 3, which is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So negative 2 is 3. At negative 1, we're at negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. At 0, we get 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3. And at 1, we get 3 plus 3, which is 6. The absolute value of 6 is 6. So it looks like that. Okay. So our two integrals, what is the equation of this line? Well, it's actually y equals negative three x minus three, because we're going at a we're going down at a slope of negative three, and it's going to have a y-intercept of negative three. This line is y equals three x plus three. So we have our two integrals. It's the integral from negative 3 to negative 1 of negative 3x minus 3 <coughs> plus the integral <coughs> from negative 1 to 1 of 3x plus 3. All right, so let's take care of this. What's the integral of 3x plus 3? So it's negative 3 halves x squared minus 3x from negative 3 to negative 1. And this one is 3 halves x squared plus 3x from negative 1 to 1. So if we stick in a negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. So we get negative 3 halves minus or plus 3 minus. We stick in a 3, we get 9 times, so it's negative 27 halves plus 27. Plus, stick in a 1, 3 halves plus 3 minus 3 plus negative 3. Right? I sure think that's right. So that's zero. This is one half plus three or four and a half. This is 
1.5. And then 27 halves. Oops, I did this one wrong. Put it in a 1, and it's 3 halves plus 3. Yeah, that's right. Put in a negative 1, and it's 3 halves minus 3. There we go. There we go. All right, so 27 halves is 13. Well, you get 27 halves. Which is 13 and a half. So 1 and a half minus 13 and a half is negative 12. Ooh. Hmm. So this is 1.5 minus 13.5 is negative 12 plus 6 is a negative 6. That didn't work out for me. I wonder where I made my mistake. Stick in a negative 1, you get 1. Stick in a negative 3, you get negative 27 halves plus 27. I don't know where I went wrong. Because if we draw a triangle, this is two wide, six high, six high, two wide. So it should be 12 in the end. I don't see where I went wrong, but I know I had to go wrong somewhere. <laughs>